Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to do things a bit different. I'm going to tell you a story. A story about nanite foliage. It gets kind of crazy, so you're going to want to watch till the end. It all started the other night when I was hanging out in Discord with Damari, and we were doing the same thing we do every night. Try to take over the world. After we finished taking over the world, we got back to testing nanite foliage in Unreal Engine 5.1 Preview 2. It wasn't looking good. Nanite foliage now supports world position offset so that we can have foliage that moves in the wind, but the performance isn't even close to usable. A small group of 73 medium poly nanite trees runs at 65 frames per second without shadows from world position offset and 29 frames per second with shadows. Increasing the number of trees in an area so that the shadows overlap quickly leads to frames per second in the single digits. Sometimes the editor even crashes. It's not looking good. The problem isn't rendering the trees. It is rendering the shadows of the trees. Virtual shadow maps are really slow and only work well when a significant portion of the on-screen shadows are cached across multiple frames. World position offset allows the leaves and branches of the trees to move, which causes the shadows to change. This means they can't cache and have to be recalculated every frame. We can view this by using the Virtual Shadow Maps Cache Visualizer. If the shadow is cached, it will show up as green. If it isn't, it will show up as blue or red. As you can see, there's way too much blue. So Damari said, hey, I've got a crazy idea. Many times in the past when he has said something like this, it turned out to be an awesome idea. So I was listening intently as he continued. Why don't we render two trees instead of one? I saw where he was headed. We could render two trees on top of each other for every tree in our world. The first tree would be set to use world position offset and not cast any shadows. The second tree would have world position turned off, hidden in game turned on, but cast shadows when hidden turned on as well. This basically turns the second tree into a foliage shadow imposter. This sounds like a crazy idea, but it just might work. So now it's time for a quick prototype. So the first thing we want to do is we want to convert our tree to Nanite. So we open up our tree and we enable Nanite support. Then we enable Preserve Area. Preserve Area is a new setting in Unreal Engine 5.1 that stops the thin Nanite triangles from disappearing as you move further away from them. So this one's really important. After we check those two checkboxes, we'll click on Apply Changes. OK, so now we're going to drop a single instance of this world position offset tree. And I can show you that in the virtual shadow maps, you can see that it can't cache the pages. OK, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go to this tree, and we're going to go to the static mesh component, and we're going to scroll down, and we're going to turn off cache shadow. So now when it's not casting a shadow, of course, there's no problem with cast shadows because it isn't casting one. But we want a shadow. So the next thing we got to do is we got to prepare our second copy of the tree. So what we want to do is we want to open this one up. This is not a nanite tree. And we want to go down and we want to remove. This one had an LOD4. This was the billboard. And so we removed that. I opened it up and I clicked the remove button. And we also want to make sure we could go delete 0, 1, 2, and 3. But instead, this for this quick test, I'm just going to come in here and set the minimum LOD that's rendered to 3. So basically, it's always rendering LOD 3. Just going to make the shadow casting a little bit cheaper. Because all this thing's for is the shadows. We're going to hide the tree. Now, the most important thing here is that we go, and I had to replace the billboard material because I haven't removed it. I had to replace the billboard material with just some, some non-WPO material. And then I had to come into the leaves, and I had to make another version. So this is, the, um, this is a material instance, so I'm going to say find parent. And I had to create this one here called m underscore leaves no WPO. And all I did was disconnect the simple grass wind from the world position offset. If anything is plugged into this in any of your LODs, even ones you're not using, 
if any of them have something plugged into world position offset, it will treat it as a world position offset tree and you will not get cast shadows. So you have to make sure that nothing's plugged into that pin. Okay, so now to show how this works, I'm going to go and I'm going to drop the this second tree, it's our imposter tree in, but we wanna go and we wanna change a few settings here. So we wanna scroll down to lighting, cast shadows is turned on, we wanna open up advanced, and we want to go to hidden shadow. This checkbox means that even if the mesh is hidden in the world, it'll still cast a shadow. This is the secret. So then we're gonna come down here and say hidden in game. Now, one interesting thing I found while I was testing this is that for some reason, if you do simulate, it doesn't hide it. So I guess simulate isn't like actually running the game. That's why I don't really use simulate very much. It's kind of annoying. Um, so we're going to go and actually say select the viewport. And now you'll see, see, here's the, here's the tree. It's casting the shadow, but it's not rendering the tree. Okay. So you see how this is going to work. What we're going to do, we're going to stop it. We're going to try to move this to basically be about where the other one is. This is just a quick prototype to see if this can work and if this idea has any merit to it. Okay, so there we go. So now we can go to our virtual shadow map cache page and you will notice, look, the shadow is cached because it's not moving. This is, this is the trick. And so now we can go and we can hit play. And now it's basically using that second tree. It's not rendering the second tree, but it's using the second tree to cast the shadow for the first one and the performance is so much better and the being able to cache those shadows is is huge because it's not recalculating it every frame this idea seems to work but you can't place every actor in the world one by one and then manually place another tree on top of each to cast shadows for it can you imagine how long that would take we also want to be able to use the foliage HLOD system for performance, and we can't do that if we're dropping trees in the world as individual actors. Now that we know our first prototype works, we need to try doing this with the foliage system. We'll create two foliage types, and we'll check both boxes so that when we go to draw, it will place both on top of each other. Unfortunately, this is only going to work in single instance mode. That is bad enough, but we soon found the real problem. Each instance rolls its own value for random scale and random yaw. So then the shadow doesn't match the original tree. Maybe we could come up with some way to seed both instances so their random values would match. Maybe. But there has to be a better way. What if we only placed the original nanite trees without shadows in the world and some other automated process added the foliage shadow imposters for us. Then we could use any of the foliage placement modes we want, and we could also use random scale and random yaw. This definitely wasn't going to be the easy way, but it sure seems like the best way. It was time to get to work on a custom editor plugin to place foliage shadow imposters for us. I spent the next day coding a prototype in C++. The idea is simple loop through the existing instance foliage actors in the world. Then for each of those, loop through and find the foliage instance mesh components. Then for each of those, loop through each instance of foliage. For each instance of foliage, add another instance of the foliage shadow imposter in my custom foliage shadow imposter component. This seemed to work well, and I was surprised at how fast it ran. Thousands of trees are processed instantly. Okay, so now I've added a lot of foliage shadow imposters and foliage shadow imposter components, but what do I do when I want to make changes and run the plugin again? It's going to create a ton of duplicates. We're going to need to remove the previously added foliage shadow imposters before we create new ones. There we go. Now we have a repeatable workflow. It would also be nice if we didn't have to rebuild all the trees in the world if we're only working on one tree type. Let's make a data table 
where we can list which nanite trees we want to process and which foliage shadow imposter meshes we want to use for each nanite tree. Then we'll add a checkbox to each row and only process the trees where the row is checked. Now that the plugin is complete, let's give it a try. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go to our foliage type. I'm going to turn off single instance mode and we're going to scroll down to these settings and we'll use 100 density, 200 radius. We'll do a pretty tight density for testing. And then we just want to make sure that the shadow casting is off. It's off. Okay. So now we've got this uh, nanite landscape here and we're kind of going to just start Start drawing. If we scroll up here, we can see we've already got 312. We're gonna we're gonna go crazy here. We're gonna put trees everywhere. Really test this plugin out. You'll notice that as we draw more of them, it creates these separate separate instance foliage actors. So these are for because world partition is turned on. So it's actually separating them by grid, which is pretty cool. And so we're up to we're up to 2k, 2.11k, you know, so we've got a pretty good we got a pretty good set of trees here. Okay. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go out of foliage mode and we're gonna go to our data table. And I've got some rows already in here, but if we didn't, we would add a row. And uh, so we're going to make sure that this one's turned on. We're replacing the fur 04 standalone. And we're going to add the shadow imposter of fur 04 standalone underscore SH is what I was using for shadows. Now, if we didn't have this already, we could go in here and say create, uh, let's think it's under miscellaneous, create a data table. And the custom type that I created is called Foliage Shadow Imposter Replacement Row. So we could do that, and uh, and we would have a new a new data table where we could add our row to it. So now that we have all these trees here, I wonder how long this is going to take. So we got two thousand one hundred and ten trees, or roughly that amount. And so here's the plugin up here. It added a button called Add Foliage Shadow Imposters. We're going to click it. Look at that. Look at how fast. Oh, it's so cool. It's so great. And if we turn on our virtual shadow map cache page, look at that. It's all green. There's no blue. It's awesome. This This has been... This has been crazy, you know, when uh, when Damari first suggested that idea, I was like, yeah, yeah, that sounds interesting, but I never thought we'd end up here. I never thought we'd end up with a, uh, a plugin that just does it all automatically. And, uh, and it's easy to make changes and run it again. And basically what's happening over here is that it's just adding these Foliage Shadow Imposter components. And when we run it again, it's just removing the ones, the instances and the components that matched that mesh type from the data table and recreating them again. And you saw how, how fast it runs. So even if we were to have, you know, millions of trees, I don't think it'd be that big a deal. So really cool. I'm super happy with, uh, with where we ended up. I hope you have enjoyed this story about Nanite foliage and how we took a crazy idea and turned it into a complete workflow for working with Nanite Foliage in Unreal Engine 5.1. The plugin I created is freely available to use, and you can download it from the link in the video description. If you need any help with the plugin, the link to my Discord is there as well. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to post them below. It helps with the algorithm, along with liking the video and subscribing to my channel. I think YouTube is punishing me for not turning on mid-roll advertisements. So they haven't been promoting my videos much recently. I really hate mid-roll ads, so I'm hoping to not have to turn them on. Until next time, have a good one.